Hey everyone, Port ISM. Welcome to part four of our Tamiya Porsche 911 GT2 video build. So we're back today with the final part of this build. We're going to get bring everything to fruition, get everything together, and get this kit finished off. Not without its dramas, as you'll see as we go through the build. A little bit of a calamity from myself. Um, but we are going to get it to the final stage and get another one off the bench in preparation for the Chevelle buddy build, my birthday Christmas buddy build, which starts on Monday the 14th of November. There we are. So without further ado, let's get into the build. And so the final part of the Porsche GT2. So we're starting off by cleaning up the rear lights. We cut them off the clear sprue. We've had a 400 thinny stick on there to clean up the rest of the uh, sprue locating point. And we've got our UMP buffer on there to clean it up. Now, this is a pair of trees I have for a long time. Misplaced them. Had a tidy pull my tools the other day and found them. It's a Mr. Hobby part holder. I have a Mr. Hobby one and a Tamiya one. I'll show the Tamiya one when we come to use it at some point. Basically, it's just a very flat, straight edge pair of uh, tweezers. And it holds the parts perfectly, grips them really well. And I like to sand them, let them ping it off into oblivion. So, a very handy tool that I kind of forgot I already had. And uh, nice to find it again. So, I'll show the Tamiya ones in a future build so these are cleaned up i've mounted them on double-sided well turned over tamiya tape i've infilled the reverse lights on the back with some tamiya one mil tape uh, using my phone as a reference picture of a picture of the back end of the real life car so just trimming it to size and placing it into the insert on the rear light itself now we could uh, airbrush this which i have many times just having a quick double check of where it's painted but I've recently purchased these Tamiya's, Tamiya enamel paints, and they're proven very, very useful. Uh, being enamels, they're absolutely perfect for brush painting. Um, they dry pretty quick as well. I'm finding within two, three hours, they're touchable, uh, or paintable over, should we say. Uh, if you apply heat, like off the heat gun, they're dry even quicker. So they're working really well, especially for the clear reds and orange as well. I've only got a handful of colors. I've got about 12 bottles in total. Um, I think I've got like five metallics, two clears, uh, the red and orange, and the rest of them are just solid colours. And I'll be using them for detailed interior parts and uh, light clusters like this. As you can see, the coverage is phenomenal. So I put a coat on, let it dry or cure for a bit, and then come back in and put a second coat over the top. Uh, using the demarcations of the lights to go to where the uh, amber indicators are. But coverage is absolutely phenomenal. And onto the orange light as well. Now, I did find with the orange side, I had to use the heat gun because um, the gravity was pulling the paint down and allowing it to pull. So I just kept moving it around, hitting it with the heat gun, and it dried up pretty quick. Obviously, be careful with the heat gun. They do get very hot, and you do stand the chance of melting the plastic parts. Also, on the front indicators at the same time, uh, and the rear uh, the front lights we don't need because we've got an intake in ours that we added earlier on. Now we're going to flat the paintwork. So we've got some 3,000, 6,000, and 8,000 3 amp Trizic pads. Um, trying to perfect these close up shots for you all using my mobile phone. I need to buy a phone mount. Currently it's just resting on a, a stand. Um, but if I can get a proper mount, I can mount to the bench. I should be able to get some better angles. So all I'm going to do is go at the roof, show you how I polish the roof, and the rest of the car has done exactly the same. So I'm using the 3000 to get rid of any major dust spots or hairs or blemishes, and then we're going to go through the 6 and the 8 uh, to get it all uh, flatted back as nice as possible. Not applying a huge amount of pressure, huge amount of pressure. Uh, you don't need that as many passes as you do with micro mesh. This is a lot more efficient, works really, really well. Um, so just be careful of burning through, just periodically dry it off with a tissue, see if the floor is gone. And uh, yeah, these are very, very good. Really, really nice. Once you've gone through the grits of paper, we're then coming with some UMP compound uh, and give it a good buff up. Now the compound is basically a more abrasive polish. We've got a nice clean cloth. And again, being wary of our edges, not applying a huge amount of pressure. 
Uh, we'll just go around the model and buffing it up basically. Giving it a good polish up to get rid of all the micro scratches from the sanding pads. Uh, once we give it a good buff up, we can wipe off all the excess. And then we come in with our UMP polish as a final thought. Like I said, the whole car is going to be done like this. It does take a bit of time. It's a couple of hours work to do. Um, but the shine you'll get off it is fantastic. This is just taking the compound off. And you can see the shine starting to come back already. Not perfect. But hey, it is getting better. Now the dust bot's not completely gone. You could push it if you wanted. See if you can get rid of it totally. As I always say, I'm happy to leave a slight floor in. Um, rather than burning through the paint. That's just me. It's my philosophy. I'd rather have a nice clear coat than have to sit there and redo it all. Same process with the polish. Buff it on, work it into the paint, and get a nice clean cloth and give it a really good buff up. And you can repeat this should you wish. Uh, but for me, that's as good enough shine for me. I like to then get some uh, water in the airbrush and jet wash all the panel lines, all the gaps to get rid of any uh, polish and compound residue. It's a fun part of modelling. quite enjoy doing this. There's something quite cathartic about doing it. Uh, and it does remove all the excess polish and what have you. One word of warning, I said every time I've showed this, make sure that as the water you're picking up and not any cellulose thinner or anything, because if you spray that on the paint, you're going to destroy your model. So if I were you, I would put the lacquer thinners and what have you out the way. Uh, keep the lids closed and keep that water to one side. There we go, the enamel paint's now dry. This is several hours later. We've got some Chrome X11 now, enamel paint, and you can see how well this stuff covers. It's phenomenal. It really is made for brush painting. Uh, literally one single pass, and it covers the uh, the model parts absolutely perfect. Uh, we're just doing some very careful painting. We don't need to allow it to pool up, so uh, we can come back on with a brush and get a bit more of the paint off if we require. But yeah, these enamel paints are very, very good. I've had them before. I had them many, many moons ago, uh, but didn't really use them because I was building armor and aircraft back then. Uh, for the cars, these are a little bit more useful, I think. And uh, I think I'll definitely be adding to the range. And I got them from super-hobby.co.uk. Super-hobby.co.uk. Uh, super it's a shop in Poland. But the prices are reasonable, as too is the postage. Now, that boring part of masking window seals. I think everybody hates this job. It is a very boring part of it, but a massively important part of the car. And the better your job you do here, the better the result you have at the end. And just by doing this, just brings the car alive, gets rid of that monotonous red colour, uh, and just adds a bit of depth to the car. So we're using some Tamiya 1, 2 and 3 mil uh, precision tape to do the outline around the window edges themselves, the rubbers, and then we'll infill it with uh, other Tamiya tapes and cling film at the end. So just allowing uh, the contour to follow around the windows with our tape, some careful application using our tweezers, uh, we can get this masked off perfectly. And if you do a good job, it'll be flawless. Uh, I know a lot of people brush paint it. It always looks awful brush painted. I'm gonna be honest with my own thoughts there. Uh, and I know a lot of people use Sharpies, and if that works for you, fair enough for me. No, this is the way I do it. A couple of hours, masking, airbrushing, it does a great job. It's a very uh, uh, focal point, I suppose is the word, isn't it? It's uh, an eye catcher, the window rubber. So the better the job you do, um, the better it will look. So while it is boring and monotonous, it's just one of those stages of building a model that needs doing. So with some careful application, we can get all that masked up perfectly. There we go. There's the front screen. We'll repeat that for the sides and the back, like so. Well, the back doesn't need doing, to be honest. Uh, and we also need to do the lower uh, sill sections um, of the side of the car as well, because the real car, they are black. If you remember, we had a part we glued on the bottom of the sills early on. You could leave those off if you wanted and paint them black se separately and glue them on. We put them in place and bonded them in and filled them. Um, so I'm just going to mask across and we'll paint it semi-gloss black uh, as the real car has. So there you go, with that done, there's all the infill and the tape done. Again, make sure you do a good job here. There's no gaps. It's very easily done and that all the tape is burnished down. And every single piece of masking tape that's gone on this car has been detacked on the back of my hand and or my forehead. Forehead's very good for detacking tape. 
Whilst we're doing the window rubbers, we might as well paint the windows as well. I do have the Zero Paint uh, Paint Mask set for the Tizan Porsche, which is the same car, uh, same kit, sorry. Um, bar a few extras, uh, differences. Um, not a fan of these masks. They tend to fit okay, but they do have the uh, habit of leaving back all the sticky residue on the screen. So I already have a vested... Um, what's the word? monetary value in these things i've got lots of them so i use them as a template now so some 40 mil tamiya tape um i lay it on the bench use this as a template cut around it and make my own uh, template out of my own masking that way i know it's going to come off not leave any sticky residue behind and not ruin all the clear parts which to be honest on this model i don't need any help doing 10 out of 10 for accuracy and putting that mask back though i'm going to say Proud of myself there. Straight in, perfectly in place. So cutting the clear parts off the sprue. Top tip here, when you cut them through, cut through it really slowly with equal pressure and it won't wipe the part on the screen. Um, once you've got the part off, keep your fingers off the glass as much as you can and sand in very gently with a 400 UMP thinny stick and then come in with a buffer at the end to finish it off. Be very, very careful. These screens are very easily broken, and the less fingerprints you get on there, the neater a job you'll have done at the end. So with this one, just the very bottom of it needs masking up. So just line up the bottom uh, and let the mask carry on. The mask is oversized, which is perfect for this. So just line up at the bottom of the screen. There's a little line you can see. And just follow that, and there we go. There's that one done. Like I say, just make sure it's all burnished down at the bottom. Make sure you've got the right side mast as well. Nine times out of ten, you'll be spraying from the inside. And on the rear one, um, it fits in a lot better, the rear one, actually. It holds around. What I've done there as well is i put some tape on to be able to hold it, like we did with the Alpha Models glass. And that way, we don't need to touch the other side of the glass at all. And like I say, on the rear screen, it's a full surround. So you need to line it up on all four um, lines. And there you go, once you're happy with it, you can burnish it down. And here we are on the spray booth. So we've got some Tamiya LP5. We're just going to do our sills at the side, all our window rubbers as well. Nice light coat, so we don't want to flood this at all. Um, we say you don't want to get any bleed through through the uh, tape. And what I would do before you commit to any paint is go around and make sure all that tape is fully burnished down. Not only around the part you're trying to mask, but all the surrounding areas where tape joins, because there's nothing worse than getting blow through of paint through masking seams. It's happened many times to me. Luckily, if you put it over 2K, you can generally get it back off. But save yourself a bit of work by ensuring it's properly masked in the first place. Um, like I say, it's a couple of light coats. This stuff dries super fast in my cave. It's always nice and warm in here. And don't forget the edges and inside corners. I'm also going to spray inside as well, around the frame and the headliner as well it'll save us brush paint it later on and there we go like i say two three light coats getting all the angles all the recesses and there we go that is that masked up and painted like i say laborious work but it does add a lot of detail to the kit and the glass again nice thin coats don't go crazy just really take your time here because last thing you want to do is get any runs or any bleed through under the tape. It looks awful and you're wasting your time almost by uh, ruining your hard work. And I sped this section up because this is unmasking. So like I say, 2K is a very strong clear coat. But do detack every piece of tape that you put down. I am ultra confident in my paint job. So I can't remember the last time I had paint lift. It's been a long, long time. Um, but just be careful, like I say, detack every piece of tape so it's only just sticky enough to hold on to the model. The amount of models I see ruined by uh, improper masking, either through painting it and not being burnished down enough, or the masking job's not been great, or they've gone too heavy, um, or the worst case scenario is the clear coat's not great and the paint gets ripped off. Uh, I see a lot of them, I really do. So take your time here, it's all about preparation. All about taking care. While this is sped up, it still took me a good, um, I think it was about four minutes to get all this tape off. 
Um, and it was near perfect. There was no flaws anywhere on the window rubbers. I've done a really good job on this one. So, like I say, the time spent is well worth using. And while it is boring, it makes a huge difference to the finished model. Because nothing catches your eye like a flaw. It really does. It'll draw your eye to it instantly. And uh, whilst I openly admit all my models aren't perfect, I still try and do my best where I can. Like I say, a lot of time and effort to mask this. It is literally unmasked in minutes. And there we go. The final piece off. There we are. And then we can unmask the windows as well. And they're looking good. And then a quick wipe over for the car to get rid of any residue left behind uh, by the masking tape. Thankfully, not a lot off the Tamiya. It doesn't really tend to leave much behind. And on a freshly polished body, it comes off nice and easy anyway. Obviously, you've got fresh paint there, so be careful. Let it dry for a while. But look at the shine on that thing. It is beautiful. And those window rubbers, they just bring it alive. They just instantly bring it to life. And there we go. So that's ready to go now. Misplaced the uh, headlight clusters. Bit of a panic on the live stream. And then I remembered to put the uh, wheels we weren't going to use in a drawer. And they were attached to it. So after a quick uh, bit of flapping around thinking, where the hell have they gone? I, uh, I found them. So they've been cut off and trimmed. Uh, a quick test fit to get them in place. There's a little locating point at the front. So make sure you get it all lined up. There we go. Quick flip around. Hold it with your forefinger. And then we're going to get some UV glue in here. I do like the UV glue for holding in some parts like this. Where it doesn't need the strength of CA glue. And it is a safer option. Unless you have a bit of a calamity. Like we're going to have in a bit with the clear parts. It's a fun story later on. I'll tell you when we get there. But yeah. Get everything lined up. Get the locating points in. Get the UV glue in there. Make sure it's all sat properly. Like so. And then hit it with the UV light. I really need to get a more powerful UV torch. And there we go. Same on the other side as well. It says it's 5 second UV glue. It's at least 10 to 15 seconds to be honest. So hold her on there a bit more than you think. And then for our indicators at the front. We've got some Bob Smiths and one of our precision applicators. Very carefully applied. Again, these indicators are handed, so make sure you test fit them first, which I already have. And then pop them in place, hold them for a second or two. Same for the other side. Now, there are clear uh, lights to go either side of those as well, but we replaced them with those intakes you can see there. If you remember the resin parts we put in the second part of the build. So we're not having those on ours. There we go. And then the rear lights. This was just going to be a test fit. Uh, it fitted in that snug. It held itself in. Now one thing I did forget to do on all the lights was my black surround trick with the uh, Sharpie pen. Completely forgot. Uh, it is what it is. It's just one of those things. But yeah, this thing friction fit, that you friction fitted itself in. Absolutely perfect. We've got the rear spoiler on and in place. Now, when I first test fitted this, it all fitted perfect. Since it's been 2K'd, it doesn't quite fit as well anymore, so it is what it is. There's a little bit of a gap at the front, uh, but I'm just going to put some Bob Smiths in from underneath just to secure it in place. And then on the back, we've got our number plate. So just drilling out the holes to the correct size. We're going to leave this uh, white. It is a left-hand drive car, so it's going to have a European number plate on it. There we go. Quick test fit of the number plate holder. Well, it's the number plate surround itself, isn't it, really? So, a couple of dabs of Bob Smiths. And we can pop it in place. Like so. There we go. So, that's in place. Hold it for a few seconds. Let it get some purchase. And now the glass. So, four individual parts of this glass, which is quite unusual for Tamiya. Fitting quite well. We got every single bit of this in perfectly first time around with the uv pen no mess no fuss absolutely perfect and then it all went wrong i'll explain what happens 
in a bit. Well, basically, I'll explain now because I've got to write a time in a bit otherwise. So, basically, I got all the glass in, UV glued in place, perfect, not a mark on the glass, absolutely perfectly clean, glued in place without any mess at all. Uh, I put the body shell on the car, caught the back window with my thumb, knocked it out, thought, damn, I'm blast it. Took the body shell off the car, tried to glue the rear one in, the side one fell out, glued that back in. The other side one fell out, glued that back in. The back one fell back out. And by this time, there was uncured UV glue just everywhere, all over the glass, all over me, all over my fingers, and all over the model. So I basically ruined the glass with that. I probably could have cleaned it all up, but I thought, ah, I'll use uh, a glue. So I did. And then I put too much kicker on my brush, not thinking. And it completely reactioned it onto the glass and ruined one of the side pieces of the glass. So I thought, what the hell am I going to do? So a quick uh, chat with Alan, who lives not far from me, lives over in Liverpool. Uh, he's got the Tizan Porsche. So I've stolen his glass off him and I will replace it for him at a later date. So a bit of a nightmare, uh, a bit of a trip through Liverpool uh, um, mid-afternoon yesterday. Um... Yes, a bit of a pig of a thing. Considering I got everything in perfect first time. Yes, so we're going to get it all in now, absolutely perfect. And then it's going to cut off in a minute when the window falls out. I didn't record any of the recovery at all. I was that annoyed with myself. Oh, and then we're going to come back when the glass is back in and the body shells back on the car. So, yes, um, the UV glue works well. This is an older pen. This is quite old now. So whether it's lost its potency, I don't know. But it definitely wasn't sticking as good as it usually does. Um, and, oh, what a calamity. So really annoying and frustrating to get everything glued in perfectly and then have it go so wrong so quickly. Um, but, hey, it is what it is. I'll show the body shell going on. There's two locating points at the back that slot in, like so. And then you've got to lift the sides out to get it in. Look how wide those rear tyres are. Absolutely beautiful car this is. Those wheels are stunning. You need to lift each side over until it clicks in. And then still making sure the back's in place. We then need to clip in the bottom here as well. You'll notice the very bottom of my grill there is broken as well. That happened while polishing. A little bit of pressure broke it. Uh, quite easy to do to be honest so a little dab of CA glue in there and you won't even notice it's gone uh, and there we go that's everything in place stance looks good the lot and here we go this is after replacing all the glass so this is a few hours later now and we're back to where we left off just then so all the new glasses in CA glued in place this time and we're going to put our front splitter on a couple of dabs of Bob Smith's give it a hold for a few seconds make sure it's in the right position let the glue grab it and do its job, which we have there. It's starting to come together now really well. And then we've got our headlights uh, for the front, the headlight glass. So again, cut it off, clean it up with our buffer. That's all we used on this one. And then a little bit of Bob Smith's on a paint pot. And then a cocktail stick to apply just a couple of dabs where we want it. We need some ultra precise glue application here. Don't want to go mad. Could use PVA if you wanted as well. And then line her up and drop it in place, like so. Hold her for a few seconds and they get purchase. There we go. And then we can repeat that for the other side. Like so. And there we go, there's the lights in place. Window wiper, just a single wiper on this. Thankfully not PE either. Just a plastic one, which is really nice for a change. Painted in semi-gloss black, glued in place. Door handles, which we painted in part two. And I cleared in Mr. Hobby super clear off camera with the wing mirrors. And the reason I did that was because sometimes the 2K, because they're such a small part, it's a little bit of overkill for parts like that. So sometimes I just glue, uh, sorry, clear in the super clear for Mr. Hobby. It's decanted and airbrushed. A couple of coats in the final wet coat does the job. There's our door handles in place. 
and the wing mirrors that we pinned last time, which I'm glad we did because it makes fitting them much more positive. We're putting in the chromed uh, reflectors with a couple of dabs of glue and a bit of a press home like so. There we go, that's that in place. Same for the other side. Be very careful at these later jobs. Make sure you don't get any sagal on your fingers. It's so easy to put on the model. The amount of times I've done it. And then a little dab of glue on the uh, brass wire. Now we pre-drilled the body before we went to paint, if you remember. So this should slot straight in. I've got a little bit too much glue on there, so we'll wipe that off. And then we'll slot it into the hole. Manipulate it into place. Get it all lined up. And then the CA glue can grab it as and when it's ready. Much easier. Same for the other side. Definitely the way to go, pinning mirrors like this. It's so much easier to get them in place. And there we go. That's both of those lined up. And then the final touch is the Porsche badge. Now these are MSN uh, sticky, basically 3D badges, I suppose they are. So they're quite nice. They're much nicer than just a decal because they are 3D. So line up by eye. Just have a quick test fit and a quick measure. And I was near enough perfect. I just need to scoot into the right a touch. And it was near enough spot on. Not bad eye. That little uh, flap just above I used as a point of interest and then once you got it in place get a cloth and give it a good burnish down and there we go there's the Porsche badge they're really nice badges those they make a big difference to the car and then a sharpie quick trick and tip here for the wiper jets well the windscreen washer jets wiper jets whatever you call them in your country and then we've got a nice clean cloth with some UMP spray wax and we're going to very carefully Give it all a wax over. So I prefer this to our purple actual buff on buff off wax. This is just, it does the job perfectly for me. We've got a nice high shine off the polishes. And this is just like a detail wax spray, uh, which works perfect. So it needs no pressure. It's not abrasive, so you don't need to keep going over the area. Just wipe it over, let it haze off, and you can buff it off uh, to a nice high shine. Just be aware of knocking any parts off. It's very easy to do. Uh, and you can do clear parts as well, should you wish. Uh, in this case, just go around, be thorough, get everywhere. Make sure any glue is fully cured, though, before you start wafting a cloth over things. And then let it haze up for a minute or two, and then buff it off with a clean cloth, like so. And you'll end up with a super-duper shiny model. Works really well. This car is just redder than red. Everything is red about the interior, everything. And it's such a vibrant, deep red as well. It's quite overpowering on camera to a degree. Um, but it's not been a bad kit to build at all. It's a little bit simple. Um, but it's gone together quite well. Other than the calamity with the glass, which is a bit of a pain, well, my own doing. Uh, the wheels are certainly added to the build because the wheels just look absolutely phenomenal. And as part of the wheels, Caesar also sent me some resin indicators for the side. The kit is missing them on the body. And the kit gives you uh, some pretty poor decals to represent the indicators on the side, the side repeaters. So these are 3D printed clear parts. I've painted them in enamel orange. We've let that dry. And they are much nicer. So we've got some glue and glaze, which has been out for a while tacking up. A little dab on a cocktail stick. Look at online references. We can see where they go. The tiniest little dabs. There we go. That is plenty. If you leave a PVA-based glue out for a while, it will go super tacky. And then line it up. Drop it in place. There we go. Job's a good one. Nice little touch, that. And same for the other side as well. And there we go. That's those in place. And then a quick number plate for the back. I found a German number plate in my spurs and just popped it on the car. 
So normal decal solution, I think I hit it with strong UMP. Burnish out all the water, hit it with the solutions, let it be. And there we go, get rid of moisture, and then we'll hit it with some UMP strong to set it in place. And there we go, with a final wipe over to get any fingerprints off. That is it basically done. Um, looking good, the wheels just really set this thing off. They really do, and it's what drew me into building the car in the first place. Um, I'm not a fan of the kit wheels, if I'm honest. These are just phenomenal. They just really bring the car alive. They're a beautiful wheel. It's such an aggressive looking stance on the car. It's such a wide arch kit. It looks beautiful. And some pictures. So this was primed in UMP, sorry, in Tamiya Pink Primer, decanted and sprayed through my UMP, no it's not, through my Water HPC Plus. Uh, it's painted in MAD Touch Up Paint Guards Red. Uh, we gave it a black panel line wash. We um, added a fuel filler cap that's missing by rescribing it with our template. Uh, we added the pins for the mirrors as well to get those in place better. Um, we then cleared it Gravity 2K Clear, which after a few well, a week or so was flattered with 3M Trizec pads and polished up with the UMP polish system. The wheels were 3D printed wheels from uh, Cesar Munez, um, who printed them for me. They came with the template for the fuel cap, the front intakes, uh, the side indicators, and they're just beautiful wheels, absolutely stunning. The centers were painted in a TS gunmetal color from Tamiya, and the outsides were painted in Molotow chrome, and uh, they just look great. They really, really do. Uh, the seats inside were sprayed with Tamiya textured paint in black, and we added some photo etch uh, seat belts and some carpet material uh, across the front half of the car. Uh, it looks great. Just a beautiful, bright red Porsche with a beautiful set, beautiful set of wheels. Right then, there we are. So it's finished. It came out all right. Uh, it's definitely a bright red car. It really dominates that uh, display case. I don't know if you can see it. It's right there. It is a bright car, and a lot of it is red. Those wheels, though, they just really set it apart, and I am very happy I got those. Thank you very much, Caesar, for doing those. If you watch this, buddy, much appreciate, along with the other parts as well. Very generous, mate. And, uh, yeah, top service from Caesar. So... Great kit, not too bad at all. A little bit simple compared to what we've been building lately, but an enjoyable build all, you know, nonetheless. Um, bit of a calamity with that glass, but hey, that's what you get for being an idiot. Um, but we got it fixed with a bit of help from Alan. Thank you, Alan. Um, and like I say, we're on to the Chevelle build now. Roll on Monday. It is Thursday. I've got no plastic kit on the bench now at all. I've got no alpha model kit on the bench at all. And going back to the... Uh, the modified Giro Lancia for the weekend and then on Monday morning on my birthday the 14th we are going to start the uh, the Chevelle buddy build which I'm really looking forward to uh, if you've not seen that yet there's a video on the channel uh, on ISM about it detailing it any of the 68 Chevelles from Revel there's two boxings there's a Revel black boxing from Germany and a red boxing from USA onto 68 Chevelle new and unstarted you can take part in the build Starts the 14th of November and finishes uh, a new year. So 31st of December. If you'd like to take part, let me know in the comments down below. There's loads of people taking part so far. and I'm really excited to see what everybody's going to do with this build. But like I say, there we go. That's a Porsche off the bench. That's build number 15 of the year done. Video builds as well. Not bad going at all. Considering we've got a 12 scale Model Fratty Hero kit on the go. And I've built six alpha model kits as well not bad at all if i don't say so myself we should maybe hit near 20 by christmas maybe we'll see um uh, but yeah happy how this year has gone so far with the model building but some really nice models as always let's support the channel keep the content going keep the live streams going there's a patron me down below i've added a whole host of extras to those tiers you get early access on the videos, you get an exclusive video build, you get exclusive how-to videos, you get added to an exclusive uh, Patreon supporter group on Facebook, a patron-only chat group on Messenger on Facebook as well, as well as other perks, a monthly live stream, 
uh, and you also keep these videos going. Without your support, I couldn't do this. So thank you all very much. Link down below for the Patreon. Have a look through the tiers. Pick what you'd like to support. And anything and everything is greatly appreciated. There's also a Buy Me A Coffee link and a PayPal Me link for one-off donations as well. And there's links down there for everything else. I've opened an Etsy shop now as well. Sell my built models. So that's now linked down below. Uh, and there's links to everything. The forum, Facebook page, umpretail.com. Everything associated with the live show, my scale mates, my own personal Paul ISM scale models modeling page, an email address to get in touch with me. There's everything down there you could ask for for my social media. Uh, and make sure you give the video a thumbs up, click the bell notifications to get into our latest videos. Make sure you subscribe and please leave a comment. Love reading all your comments and feedback. And question for today. Oh, I think we've asked about things you've wrecked before so what what was your greatest ever save what what's the thing you've done and you thought oh it's ruined that's it it's done the build toast and you've brought it back and finished it and been happy with it i think lately for me it's that bmw a50 the revel one where the wheels wouldn't fit because i changed the wheels and it was just a nightmare and i managed to bodge it together and look like an okay model at the end what is your greatest comeback you've ever done uh, with your modeling? Let me know in the comments down below. There we are. Thanks for watching, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your night. Take care. Bye-bye.